Hi, my dear friends. Today we are going to study a new poem that is chapter number two from our plus two English textbook from the first unit. And I hope you remember the name of first unit Flights of Freedom, especially talking about women empowerment. So this is a poem, Any Woman. Okay. Any Woman. That is the name of the poem. So when I caught on the heading of the poem, in last class also, whenever we talk about women or women, I have explained this thing. So I again would like to tell you the same. Any woman. This is what we call in Malayalam woman and W-O-M-E-N called women. This is plural and this is singular. So you can use woman is and women are. And always understand there is no word women's as plural. But with apostrophe s you can use. Understand? You can use the word woman's only with apostrophe s. This is singular and women is plural. Why I tell this, you know, whenever you write any poem or whenever you write any answer of the question related with the poem any woman, people or students have a tendency of making mistake when they write in the beginning itself woman, women, they make difference and when, when they pronounce also they make mistake. So singular form is woman and plural form is women okay so this is written by Catherine Tina let's go through the information about the author whenever we study a poem it is very important to know who is the author of the poem then only we get what she told then we can research about her history and why she tells so everything we will get only when we know something about her so here as our textbook gives us the information about Catherine Tinan or Catherine Tainan, 1815 and 1931 is an Irish born writer known mainly for her novels and poetry she has to her credit more than a score of novels and seven books like score means what you mean score score means 20 maybe you heard the word score in cricket in football 2-1 Brazil 2 Argentina 1 Argentina 2 Brazil 1 and cricket india 350 for 19 or for nine like that you heard that score is in cricket and sports here it means number 20 seven books of verse she usually wrote under the name catherine tainan hinson her human sympathy is keen tender warm and constant so in every word of Catherine Tinan, you can see a, a tendency or a sympathy towards woman, towards human being. Okay, towards human being, you can see uh, a sympathy from the words and the novels and all the works of Catherine Tinan. That's very clear. Okay, the poem "Any Woman" presents all emperizing power of a woman to hold family together. So. Before going into the poem, I would like to tell this poem talks about or this poem discusses on the holding power of a woman, holding power of a woman for a family. How a woman is capable of holding a family. That is the main core, core area of the chapter. So remember, whenever we look at the, when we go through the uh, life history or simple biodata of Catherine Tainan. These are the things to be in your mind. Listen, uh, born in 1859 and 1931, Irish born, more than a score of novels and seven books of words, score means 20, human sympathy, any woman presents all emprising power of a woman to hold a family together. That's all, that all are the introductory part and let's go. <laughs> Let's go. So here in this unit, we are talking about freedom. So I have some questions. What is your concept about freedom? 
when does a person enjoy real freedom do women do women enjoy real freedom women support a family but are they really supported by the family this is a real question especially regarding this chapter think about this our mother our sister our grandmother everybody supports our family well but do they get the same support from the family from us or from all of us think about it i simply say no i simply say no they are not getting enough support from the family our mom always helped us to study to go wherever we want and they try maximum to grant uh, money from the father and she tries a lot but we are giving back what with harsh words we are scolding her for silly reasons we are being rude towards her for uh, simple and silly reasons so my dear friends just react well towards your parents especially your mom your sister respect them and status do we get the same status think about your family think about you and your sister think about a woman in the family and a man do they have the same status whenever there is a program or whenever there is any any function do woman and uh, man gets the same man get the same status that's about your family first of all think about your family then think about your society your village do they get the enough participation uh, do they get enough equality in everything do they get enough status for everything then think about your district whether they get it or not think about your state your country the world and compare between your country and another country and understand they are also women here also we have women then why the disparity between the people why the disparity between the men and women that happens in our society think about whether at least you people must be giving equal status for both men and women that's my point today okay so read the first stanza of the poem i told you this poem completely describes and glorifies look at the word glorify whenever you write about this poem anything whenever you write anything about this poem you should use the word glorify another word you know replica 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 means quite reputation so the poem any woman is a replica of women's or um, woman's good activity i told with apostrophe s okay replica of women's good activity replica of women's good activity and her power her commitment her sincerity her energy her enthusiasm in the family see so the poet Catherine Tynan glorifies the woman so let's read the first stanza i am the pillars of the house the keystone of the arch am i take me away and roof and wall would fall to ruin me utterly i am the pillars of the house so here the speaker it is first person narrative i am so it means that it can be any woman it can be any woman so the poet probably it's a lady it's a woman she herself speak her quality as she talks about herself what is i am okay so this is a first person narrative i am the pillars of the house any woman is a pillar of any house so look at the importance of pillar for a house what is the importance of a pillar when we build a home the same important is there for mother or woman in the in a house the keystone of the arch am i i am look i am the keystone of arch that's enough i am the keystone of arch so if you build a keystone if you build an arch 
it should be a keystone. What is the importance of a keystone? What is the importance of a pillar? Without keystone, without foundation, we cannot make anything, we cannot build up anything. And without pillars, we cannot make any roof. So the main foundation of a family lies in woman and her power. That is what Catherine Tinan would like to share with us in the perspective of a woman. Or from the, uh, from the part of a woman, she would like to ex explain that things. And if you take me, if you take keystone and pillar and everything, what will happen? Quite simply, and these examples are taken from uh, the natural examples. And here, Catherine Tinan would like to compare woman with all the attributions, all the great things in the nature, all the powerful things in the nature, especially related with the home. Listen here. So, if you take me, what will happen for the home? What will happen for the home? Everything will ruin me utterly. That means uh, that will uh, come down, that will be fallen down. That's the meaning. That's the meaning of the first stanza. And coming to the poetic devices, and once again I would like to tell, woman is important in a family. Think about your mother. Whenever I speak all about, when I speak all of this, think about your mom. When you go to your home one day and you don't find your mom there, how boring it will be to come to the home. That is why it's told that she is a pillar, like a home. Without a pillar, there is no existence for, existence for a building like that. There is no any existence for a family without the presence of a woman. That was the point. Look at the poetic devices used or the figure of speech or poetic devices. When you write poetic device, okay, or figure of speech. Whenever you write appreciation of a poem, when you write appreciation of a poem, you should write the figure of speech or poetic devices. So when you write the appreciation of the poem, any woman, I, I would like to suggest to you one thing that you know, uh, you have to quote some examples. Like if you write, the poet has used many poetic devices in the poem. If you use that, better you just quote some examples like, I am the pillars of the house. I am the keystone of arch. So what is a poetic device used in the first stanza? It's a metaphor. Comparison without using like or as. Look, I would like to tell you what you mean by a metaphor. Comparison without using. Here, I am the pillar. I am the pillar. So, woman is compared with pillar, pillar without using a like or as. That is called metaphor. If you use I am like a pillar or I am as a pillar, that is called simile. Simply you understand it. Okay. Suppose what is the difference between metaphor and simile? Metaphor is higher degree of comparison and simile is minor degree of comparison. Suppose if there is a person he is courageous enough then we tell that he is like a lion. We feel oh he's like a lion courageous. Sometimes if, we, if he, he is more courageous we say he is a lion itself. Okay, that is the difference between uh, metaphor and simile. Why I explain all those things very simply, you know, you should understand it. And whenever you go to uh, write examination from this poem, you should understand what is it. Okay, the pillar and I am the pillar of the house. I am the keystone. So I am like a keystone. That is what we call simile. I am a keystone is called metaphor. Metaphor is a higher degree of comparison and simile is a minor degree of comparison. Okay. So let, let's move to the uh, second stanza. Before that, here man is, here woman is compared to pillar and keystone of the arch. Okay. Stanza second. I am the fire upon the hearth. I am the light of the good sun. 
I am the heat that warms the earth which else were colder than a stone. Now after t talking about the family she would like to come to the outside of the family even talking about inside and she takes some examples outside of home. I am the fire upon the hearth. I hope you already know that you hearth means how you call it. It's called not oven it's oven. It's oven. Okay. Not oven. Hearth means that oven. Like you call stove or something. So, what is the main important part of a hearth? Never read it hate. Okay. I hear some students like H E A R T, they call it hurt. Never. This is heart. Hurt means H U R T, hurt. This is hot. Okay. So I am the fire upon the hearth. So if there is a hearth or an oven, uh, if we need to cook anything, we need fire upon that. Without fire, is there any importance for a hearth? Without fire, maybe in, in nowadays for a gas stove. So here, the poet would like to tell us one thing that she is a fire upon the hearth. It means in two times. Peripherally, she says she would like to cook the food for the family. And uh, there is an implied meaning. Implied meaning means inner meaning and in between the lines that she gives the spiritual food for the family. That's why she uses the next one. I am the lights of the good son. I am the lights of good son. What do you mean by that? There would be bad son and good son. What do you mean by good sun? If it is a bad sun, if we go out with more heat, it, it is not affordable for us. So same time, woman gives us what? The light. And same time she doesn't disturb us with the heat. She gives us warmth, which a child needs to grow up. Look, I am the heat that warms the earth. So if you need a warmth in the earth, like for example, for any plantation, for any plant to grow up, there need a, a, a warmth, a warm is needed on the earth. Who gives it? Woman gives that for the earth. That's a point there. So which else? Which else means this which means all this uh, earth and light of good sun okay earth without the warm of the mother this earth will be colder than a stone here stone is used it means that is a stagnant thing a passive thing so stone is already a passive but earth is not altogether passive there there is river there are trees there are mountains, birds, everything is there. So it is not a stagnant thing. But if you look at a stone, simply it, it is a stagnant one and uh, it, is, it is a passive one also. So it will be colder than a stone, stone means colder, it is in a negative sense. Colder means if someone tell about one, he's a cold person like in Malayalam I think, okay. So it, it doesn't mean that he's a positive, okay. It means that he's, he's not much active, okay. And look at the uh, rhyming scheme like A, B, A, B. So for all this stanza, we follow the same pattern A, B, A, B, except for the first stanza in the poem. And I simply ask you, what are the poetic devices used here in the poem? Can you tell me what are the poetic devices used here in the poem? Yes! I am the fire upon the hearth. I am any woman. Any woman is a fire upon hearth. So fire upon hearth. Here again we can see the metaphor. The light of good sun and the heat that warms the earth. Everything is metaphor here. So this poem is really a bundle of 10 more than or nearby 10 metaphors you can see in this poem. That is this poem is always called a poem of metaphor. Many metaphors are used here. Okay. So why I emphasize all these points, you know, whenever you go through the explanation, whenever you go through the appreciation of the poem, you should write it. This is a poem of metaphor. And compared with hearth, good sun and uh, 
warm of the earth everything coming to the third stanza look at the third stanza okay at me the children warm their hands i am their light of love alive without me cold the hearthstone stands nor could the precious children thrive here you can see at me at mother the children warm their hands what do you mean by warming the hands so if our if our hand is cold it is if it is frozen we can't do anything so if you want to move our fingers if you want to do anything with our hand what we need we need a warmth even if you go outside uh, out, outside india and if you go at least delhi and if it is very cold you will do like this you will warm your hands for what because you want it to be alive so to be alive to be alive you need what you need warmth in your hands from where you will get it from where you will get it you will get it from mother so for a small baby from where he or she gets warm to grow up that is from his or her mom that's why she acclaims that she uh, she tells that i am i am the mother i am i warm the hands of my babies i am the light of love alive i am the light so in everybody's life we need a light all all are in a darkness darkness means in many sense maybe we may be illiterate so we have no knowledge that's why we may be illiterate and we will be in such a darkness in such a darkness we might be so who enlighten sometimes we we will be darkness means inability of doing many thing if there is darkness we can't do anything so here the word darkness stands for inability so from that inability mother made the people or made the baby to ability that is the light from that inability mother makes them able to do many thing that's what we call light that's why she is a light from that darkness she gives way uh, she paved the way to the many and light of love not this is not a simple light whenever we advise someone for suppose example of a teacher he can give you advice in two way one way he will give you everything in a harsh way in a rough way same time he can give it in a sincere I mean in a in a loving and motherly way even be used if there is any teacher with good character loving character we call her she has a motherly character she has a motherly character why we call it why we call it we call it because she has love she has love and that is alive love there are two types of love one is a stagnant love which is died already another one is a love which is alive alive means uh, like it, it, you can experience that you will feel it there are two types of love one is died one sometime i will love someone or i love someone but i cannot express it i cannot uh, make a feel of that love but still i say that i love her or i love that or i love him i love my mom and i heard many children say oh, yeah, i love my mom very well but mother doesn't feel it but if your mother says that i love my son that's felt that's experienced you can see that in the world right like that look i am their light of love alive i am an alive light without me called the hearthstone stands if there is no mother you know we told in the last stanza about what i am the hearthstone same time here we use without mother uh, hard stone will be called so there, there will not be any foot that is a peripheral meaning i told implied meaning when they uh, talk about growing up in these two lines here she says about hard stone stand so here we mean that there is an implied meaning that's moral education or the uh, or what they need for their brain also not only what they need for their belly and for their physical physic but also what they need for their psyche or their mind 
that all are cooked by mother nor could the precious children thrive so thrive means grow up well children cannot grow up without the help of mother that is a point there in the in the stanza in the third stanza here also you look a b a b pattern is used coming to stanza number four i am the twist that holds together the children in its sacred ring wow look at the word sacred ring the note of love from whose close tether no lost children goes a wandering i am the twist that holds together the children in its sacred ring suppose here again we comes to a precious meaning of a family look twist means what if you have a window or a door in your family uh, that hold together to one part of the wall and it will be uh, going up and uh, in and out with with the help of that twist okay something uh, like this and uh, if it is a door you can see something in between the door that connect between the wall and the door that's called twist woman here is a twist that open the door if they need anything and close the door if they don't need anything for children for children for small and big babies and grown up people woman they close the door because she is a twist if that twist is not working well you cannot close the door you cannot open the door it will be stopping in a way it will be standing uh, uh, still in a way okay so here the woman is twist of the family in we compare the family to a sacred ring when we compare the family to a sacred ring then woman is a twist he she allows them in and out and everything even it, it is washed they they allow it uh, uh she allows everyone to go up okay the note of love from whose close tether no lost child goes a wandering woman is the note of love this is also something that not means when we tie something and uh, if you, if you tie something with a rope and there is a small thing that is called knot from whose close tether from her uh, tether no lost child goes wandering you know even uh, you can see whenever you look outside there are many wandering children if they have a good mother or if they get a good mother they would not go like that so wandering children is the result of uh, if we, if we cannot consider the mother well if we cannot consider her well if a child didn't get the enough consideration from a mother he will be going wandering so but here the mother is not because mother is a note of their love from that tether from that rope from that tying nobody can go out that was the point from the fourth stanza and we are going to fifth stanza in the beginning we told i am the pillars of the house here you look again i am the house from the floor to roof i tack the walls the board i spread i spin the curtains wrap and woof and shake the down to be their bed look in the first stanza we told that i am the pillars here she says and she claims that she is a house itself from the floor to roof she is a house not a pillar itself not all, not only a pillar she is a house from floor to roof that was the point and look i deck the walls i deck the walls means i decorate the walls in another meaning she is herself a decoration for the wall isn't it she is herself a decoration for the wall of a house so she deck the walls the board i spread if there is any board needed she spread it it is a duty of woman and mother she does all it is not her duty she does it usually she does it that's why she claims that she does all those things in a home okay i am the house from floor to roof i deck, decorate the walls if there is a board board means something that you use uh uh for the wall and other things then she spread it okay i spin the curtains wrap and woof wrap and woof means vertically and horizontally 
Spinning cotton means spinning. Okay, spin you already know that using the thread and do that stitching and curtains. What is the need of a curtain in a home? Even after a window, we will have curtain. Why? To keep the privacy. That is the answer. We need curtain in a home or in a room to keep our privacy. So this is a duty or this is woman who does the keeping of privacy of children. Maybe when we were children, we might have many drawbacks, many problems and we were not even wearing dress. But it was our mom who covered us with dress. It was our mom who gives us dress. It was our mom who told us don't show your body to others and she was keeping our privacy. Even if we have any mistake, she won't tell it to others. She never, she always boosts about or boast about our uh, good quality not a negative quality that's why i tell it is a duty or of a woman to keep the privacy she does it when i use the word it is her duty you never think it is cumbled upon her okay this is what she does in the family that is what i would like to glorify about a woman and a mother and you know i spin the curtains means i kept their privacy and i shake the down to be their bed i hope you got the meaning of the word down down means feathers Especially from this part you can see the chest part of a bird you can see some feathers that's what we call feathers. So you can see birds. Here the poet would like to take another example from nature that is from birds. That is from birds. What they do they shake means shaking you already know shaking a tree okay they shake their down their feathers to, to make a bed for their small offsprings offsprings means their children okay children for their children they make it as a bed so in case of bird uh, mother mother bird shake its feather its down to be their bed here mother herself our mother herself sacrifices all her desires this part or this feather is important for bird but she make it bed for her children or offsprings like that mother for mother her desires dreams everything were important everything was important but she had sacrificed everything for children she sacrificed everything for children that was that is a comment from so understand when she sacrificed everything for you you should sacrifice at least something for her and give back some respect to her okay coming to the last stanza no uh, coming to the next stanza i would like to tell one thing i am their walls again their wall against all danger their door against the wind and snow thou whom a woman lay in a manger take me not till the children grow that is a poem see coming to the last stanza of the poem any woman i would like to give one more uh, explanation from the last stanza look danger a grow b manger Manger A, grow B, A, B, A, B. So, manger. How to read it? Never read it. Manger. It's manger. Manger. Okay. I am their wall against all danger. I am the woman. Any woman in the wall is a wall against danger. So, there will be difficult situation, adversities, bad conditions in the life. But our mother will defend it for us she keep everything and you can see uh, in many cases even in the nature birds or animals everything everything they keep their children like that our mom also if there is any problem she always take the baby in the cradle and she uh, keeps the baby right their door against wind and snow so she is Danger situ if there is any danger situation woman protects us mother protects us wind and snow also she protects from the different different kind of dangers whether it is a windy season or a snow season whatever season in all time all time she will protect us and here in the last two line you can see prayer from from the mother a mother prays to God thou 
look at the word thou thou means you it is in all the english you you whom whom same time you same thing a woman jesus mother maryam okay saint maryam a woman laid mean delivered in a manger manger means a place where we keep grass and hay for the cow buffalo other thing horse okay we keep a grass hay and food for buffalo cow oxen that is called manger so here infant jesus what do you mean by infant jesus okay small jesus small okay when he was a baby it's called infant infant jesus you already know the history in the uh, christian background that in infant jesus wa was born to a manger so whom deli who delivered infant jesus that was maria so she was a mother so this mother prays to jesus god you were laid in a manger by a mother so from that manger you become a great person because of the help of a mother that is saint maria okay and according to an another belief system you can see the prophet isa was uh, and mother was uh, prophet maria maria was the mother of prophet isa maria was uh, uh, mother of prophet isa so they become a great person whether it is a prophet or a god become a great person why because of the mother mariam she cared that's why this mother you are such a person you are grown up with the help of a mother that's why take me not ch my children grow up till the children grow up you can take me you can stop my life you can take back my soul but only after my children have grown up look at the sincerity of a mother she ask almighty god to give her life for what for what she want life she want life for what to meant her children so take me after my children are grown up take me i have no problem that's my happiness that is what we call the real sacrifice from a mother okay so that is a real sacrifice of a mother understand the whole meaning this poem was completely glorifying the activities of a woman so in the unit we were talking about three elements of empowerment corrigello matchbox and any woman all these are talking about power of woman so this poem also gives us why she should be glorified and what are the glorifying activities that she's been doing in a family understand her value and whenever you write whenever you write um uh, any explanation or appreciation of the poem use all the poetic devices use the themes i hope you already know how to appreciate a poem we will be discussing that okay so i hope this is clear write down the note and everything uh, if you have any doubt don't forget to contact and i hope i have explained it well thank you so much for listening to my class